So, Victoria, if you are ready with your team, you can start. I will give you a presenter. Mm, thank you. Much. Okay. Mm -hmm. And Rosanna, can you please start? Good evening. So uh, today we are talking about uh, marketing strategy uh, connected with uh, our beloved project, uh, Ms. Sergeyeva. And um, uh, to begin with, uh, we would like to stress that uh, undoubtedly, when we talk about generally uh, about any kind of election campaign, or when we talk about an image of a politician, uh, we need to uh, bear in mind that actually um, the activity of this person is um, connected and touches, in fact, all citizens who have the right to vote. And uh, thinking strategically, First, we need to identify our target audience. Vicky. Our target audience and um, identify it uh, as directly and clearly as possible. And uh, undoubtedly, first of all, we need to think about location and age. So uh, here we aim at citizens of St. Petersburg, who are more than 60, 16, I'm sorry, uh, having in mind that the nearest elections will be in two years, so 2024. That's why uh, 16 plus young generation is also among our target audience. Uh, we do still uh, think that citizens of St. Petersburg, not only those regions she adds right now, but nearest regions and St. Petersburg in general is uh, our target audience because uh, first of all those tools and those communication channels my dearest colleagues will present later allow us to cover this target audience. Second aspect is connected with um, the simplest fact that um, our leads and voters uh, of our region have relatives have friends in neighboring regions. That's why the more we cover, the better. And uh, talking about the main um, identified target audience, we uh, identify it as social welfare group. For this um, uh, particular group, we have several reasons. Uh, generally speaking, uh, if we uh, address the term uh, social welfare group as, for example, it is identified by International Labour Organization. Uh, it is a group of uh, citizens who, first of all, need our attention and need our assistance. Uh, here we present uh, examples of those citizens who might be introduced, involved into this uh, target group. And um, here uh, we cover uh, people beginning from 16 plus and uh, just with no limits of age, having in mind we have and pensioners, these are old, usually old people, disabled single parents, this is middle-aged people, orphans, students, young generation. So we understand that we cover a wide range of citizens. And again, we've looked through statistics of St. Petersburg and realized that um, among, uh, approximately 35% of uh, voters in St. Petersburg can be considered in, the, in this uh, target group, social welfare group. More than that, um, having in mind current activity of Vera Sergeyeva, uh, actually, most of her uh, activities right now are connected with these people from this or that angle. So her current activity right now already provides us information material for our messages to, full, uh, to fill our uh, marketing campaign. 
that's why we first already have uh, information to provide, having in mind her activity. And if we think strategically and if we work out uh, our marketing campaign correctly, this information will reach this target audience. And the last reason why we think this is the most important target audience for us is that uh, it's an emotional aspect. Uh, having in mind that uh, these people uh, first also have friends, they have relatives, they have some connections. So all work and all information um, directed to these people will also be spread further. And uh, in next slides, my colleagues will present uh, which information and how we are going to uh, present to this target audience in the framework of our marketing campaign. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Rosanna. And now let's uh, look how we're going to attract our target audience. So first of all, we will definitely use different communication channels and tools. And actually, we are going to promote Vera Vladimirovna's public image based on this following point. So first of all, we would like to emphasize that Vera Sergeyeva, she is the citizen of St. Petersburg. She was born in Leningrad, so which means that she is one of, uh, of them, one of the citizens. And uh, that means that she knows the problems of the city, its perspectives, and she you know she knows the city very well and moreover she cares about the city's histories so here we can see the example that she is an author of a series of books memory of the heart that is dedicated to the great patriotic war and uh, the blockade of leningrad and moreover she is a respected deputy so uh, she proposed many useful initiatives and projects and uh, currently, she actually uh, constantly supports residents in solving uh, their problems. And also, uh, which is what is really important, uh, she is a lawyer by education, so which means that she knows uh, well how the governmental system works and what rights have uh, citizens of her region. And uh, she uh, has empathy and compassion for children because she used to work as a juvenile inspector and she still helps children who find themselves in difficult situations. So we can see uh, throughout your activity that she helps a lot uh, children in difficult situations. And uh, last but not the least, she is the loving uh, mother and wife, which is uh, important for a politician, uh, we believe. So people tend to vote for uh, candidates who are, you know, committed to their uh, to their spouse. And it is the indicator that they won't back out of other commitments on uh, to their uh, constituency. So this is also important. So the main message that we would like uh, to promote that she is uh, emphasized that she is from St. Petersburg and she is one of us so she's not an outsider and one of you and from st petersburg to st petersburg and uh, uh we would like to say that uh, your main message uh, was based on these uh, sentences on this text that we are citizens of the imperial city where the history of russia was written for more than two centuries, it has been the brilliant capital of the great Russian empire, and we must now preserve the cultural heritage. And my loyalty is to St. Petersburg and its citizens, and I am one of you. This is my hometown too. It is where I am raising my children. It is where my parents raised me. I love the city and want to see it flourish. And now let's see how we can deliver this message uh, to different target audiences. So first category that we've identified is teenagers and young people aged 16, 35. So as Rosanna said, those who are now 16, in two years they will be 18 and will be able to vote for our candidate. So in terms of communication channels, we've chosen the following. Um, Instagram still, VK, Telegram as an alternative to Instagram, YouTube, and uh, also uh, commercial radio stations that are based in St. Petersburg. And 
in these channels, we would like uh, to apply following communication tools. Um, would you please switch to the next slide? Yes, so uh, in, on YouTube, it would be podcasts. And as you know, podcasts can be published in various platforms and various apps. So we would not limit ourselves just to YouTube podcasts. Uh, also, we would conduct interviews for radio stations. Um, one of um, the techniques that we would like to use is face-to-face -face communication. So um, organizing and participating in university events uh, would be, we think would be a great idea because uh, this would promote uh, the image of Sergeyeva and let younger generations know about her. Uh, just from personal experience, I do remember people who organized uh, specific events uh, in my town and in my university, and uh, these things are appreciated if they are not um, forced and actually bring uh, some useful knowledge to people. Um, in VK and Telegram, we would introduce our sticker packs because young generation likes to visualize things and meme culture is great there. And uh, also based somewhat on this wave, we would also design specific election pins and merch. Uh, and if our pins and merch are successful, we would uh, widen our range of merch. Uh, so people could uh, wear our election campaign visualization on themselves and also introduce other people to our candidate. Um, about other communication channel are uh, TV, Facebook, YouTube, newspaper and radio. Um, communication tools for adults uh, are advertising on radio programs, new and advertising on TV, both state and regional TV channels, video on YouTube, uh, advertising in printed media, especially newspaper, example, Komsomovskaya Brasda, um, advertising their postal material. Thank you. And for the elderly population, uh, we have following communication channels. First of all, it's uh, radio, TV that are, uh, as we all know, more popular among elderly population uh, representatives and gadgets, boards and newspapers. And let's see what kind of tools we are going to use. So it's advertisement on radio channels. It's TV ads. It's news details on newspaper. It's, of course, participation in TV programs, which is one of the uh, great ways to, uh, to build the public image. Uh, advertising boards in uh, busy areas of the city and gadgets as gift outside supermarkets or in different uh, territories such as um, in crowded streets uh, and uh, there will be some uh, benefits such as pins, pens or small calendars or block notes. And uh, that's it. Thank you. Thank you, team. So and as a team, do you have any questions, maybe suggestions, comments? I have a small question, or maybe it's a comment or a suggestion, I don't know, but it's just something to uh, think about. Like, for example, for the age group that is, um, let's say, between 25 and until 50, or maybe even until 60. Like, for this specific age group, I think, uh, people can be divided into even different groups inside this group. What I mean is that, for example, there are people that work in corporate spheres. There are people that work in schools and uh, there are people that work in the government. So is it like uh, maybe a better way to divide this specific sphere into other smaller spheres just to be able to uh, control the message that we want to deliver? 
because definitely people from different spheres have from different spheres have different uh, ways of thinking and different needs. Like for example, if someone is 30 years old and he's a, a worker in a coal factory, he doesn't have the same needs as someone who is also 30 years old but uh, working as a CEO of a company, right? Do you mind if I answer? Yes. Yeah, sure. uh, actually, at the very beginning, we identified our target audience uh, as a social welfare group. The thing is that uh, uh, having in mind Mr. Geva's uh, experience, having in mind her image, I mean both her visualization, I'm sorry, but we must be frank and open, having in mind her appearance, way of behavior, we identify a social welfare group as the main target audience we are aimed at. And in this very particular uh, group, we will not find neither governmental uh, representatives of something like mid or top level uh, representatives, nor business and so on and so forth. So uh, uh, Vicky, would you be so kind to open the second slide? Uh, the list uh, of uh, those whom we can find in our target group, uh, I mean in our target audience. Having in mind, uh, according to statistics, this is around 35% of those who might vote. Uh, it is already quite a big group, quite a big target group. That's why uh, if we, for example, uh, start to uh, divide and um, aim at different target groups with uh, quite different ways of um, living, uh, communication channels and so on and so forth, we'll lose everyone. So uh, we see uh, this target group as the main for us because from this target group, first, we can represent what kind of activity is very important for us. So we'll show that uh, she is, on the one hand, mother, she is careful, but on the other hand, she is a lawyer, she is experienced, she is a politician, and she acts. So uh, what we are talking about here is that uh, we have already a kind of uh, information uh, that we need to provide this particular target audience. And this target audience will also work for us. It's probably as maybe it will be my uh, vision, maybe my group mates won't uh, agree with me, but it's the moment when we transform leads into our voters and make these voters work for us. So we'll provide uh, people with a visualization how professional we are, how much we can do. And undoubtedly, we'll have to work directly with smaller target groups, but work with them in a bit different way. So for example, we already have connections with business because we act as a, a deputy in a legislative sphere. So undoubtedly, Vera Vasily was Sergeyeva, I'm sorry, <laughs> has already activity directed to business structures. But if we start spreading um, our sources to various target audience, we'll lose the main um, active group, the one that we can attract. And having in mind her vis uh, visualization, having in mind her experience, having in mind her background, we consider this social welfare group our main target audience, the one that we need to surround around us and make our basis. I don't know whether I answered the question, but actually. Actually, it was quite clear. It's just that like uh, in this part, I understood basically what the target audience was meant, but was uh, meant for. But then after it, I was a bit confused when uh, the communication channels were used because there were ages. So, uh, but yeah, thank you very much. Uh, so, we, we... Sorry, yeah, these are ages, uh, like among this type of group exactly. So, uh, 
Rosanna just said that uh, this type of our main target audience, because we cannot target all the citizens. Yeah, it's impossible. And our main group is this one. And these are age groups are uh, like among these people who uh, who is in this group. If I explain correctly. <laughs> Yes, I got you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> and thank you for the question. Nice one. Ah, finally, you find your voice. Okay, grow your teeth and claws. It's okay. It's really make me happy. Yes, you all correct. Uh, I have a little bit of comments. Okay. Uh, the age of your editorial must start from 14 years because the election um, period is four years. So after four years of selection, there will be 18. Just remember the things that they will be awarded. So include them into your target audience. Because we're talking not about tactics, we talk about strategy. So you must provide some information in long period of time. And when you're planning some of your strategies, you must understand that your target audience can be changed during a time. It's okay. So uh, just later on. Uh, so finally, you start to speak without notes. It's okay. It's really um, difficult sometimes to hear that you reading a note. Okay, you can just send me a note and I will read it by myself. It's really hard to hear you sometimes. And if you think that I'm not see or your uh, teammates didn't see your picture, uh, it means that they didn't understand that you're reading a note. So it, uh, I will try to explain. So. Okay, you can use notes for some maybe hints, mm, sometimes for some plan of your speaking and so on. So, uh, yes, you need uh, good practice to speak loudly and to speak fast and clear. Okay, uh, but speak, not read. I understand that you can read and read. Uh, ex especially good if you're on a magistrate program. So um, try to speak from your heart with mistakes. It's okay. Every speaker has mistakes, a huge amount of mistakes. Even professional speakers, uh, before they became uh, a master and uh, they became a master in special programs. So if they speak on one theme in one term, uh, for years, okay, they have no mistake in this case because they know every word, every letter by heart. Uh, you can wake them up in during the night and they will say you the same with the same words. Okay, it's just a practice. Just try to use your uh, speaking uh, as a tool because uh, it will be more um, polite to your audience when you speak without notes, uh, using your own words, because it will be more uh, close to your audience and they will understand you better. Next, try to make a smile, because it's really work. Mm, just about speaking. Uh, your marketers, you must understand that your audience uh, see sometimes even when you write with a smile. Mm, it's a strange thing. I can explain it uh, in uh, some um, business, business and in some more scientific words. But even when you write some words with a smile on your face, it really works and your readers can see that you write it with a good uh, emotions and with uh, good mood. Use it uh, as a tool also, as a speaker. Next, uh, taking back to our person. Okay, I see that right now you really know your targets, you really know your project because you start to make um, 
an angry politics, you start to defend your position. And yes, it's okay. Um, also, you make the same mistake, Rosanna, as I already made uh, for two or three times, and not only me, uh, several correspondents, uh, and uh, when uh, with the name of your candidate, uh, there is a huge um, uh, misunderstanding that sometimes they call uh, Vera Vladimirova, or, and so on, so on. So it's okay, it's uh, a base mistake. And uh, your candidates uh, really uh, joke, have some joke about this. Uh, talking about um, your tools. Okay. Uh, for elder person 65 plus, uh, you can also use excursion. Uh, the city budget has some money for these tools. Uh, you can use private meeting with some societies like um, they have really elderly society inside uh, um, a big resident houses and even on uh, some local societies and uh, summarizing every tools and every way you use in your work you can use identity as a term so you create an identity and it's a value for your voters and it's really work you're on the right way so keep it on and you'll find the right words so it's a value proposition and it's a value proposal for your target audience because even right now or even in every time for citizens needs self-identity with a place and St. Petersburg must be that place. So your candidate can be like a promoter of uh, this value. And uh, uh, you already find the needed words. So from St. Petersburg to St. Petersburg, it was really good. And remember that um, if you talk about local history to St. Petersburg, many Leningrad citizen still thinks that uh, their city is a capital. So when you talk about uh, imperial city, talk about three hundreds of capital, of brilliant capital, no matter that official capital was moved to Moscow. Mm, if you work with local audience, you must know the local jokes and local some and local legends also. Okay. Good job, nice one. Okay. Uh, team two, are you ready? Yes, yes, but I think it's better to reconnect, right? We won't have time for all of us. Yes, yes, you're right. Okay, so right now. Actually, I think we're ready to start. Okay. Are we waiting for anyone else? I mean, like from... from from the class, I don't know. I think we are still uh, waiting your leader, who is waiting right now. But she yes, rejoined yes. just just right mm -hmm. now. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So who will show the presentation notes? We can uh, we can present. We are ready. Can you please give us the right, or sh can we do it without it? Uh, you always can uh, use, um, okay, uh, Violet, you have uh, a permission and oh, you, okay. you can start. All right. Just oh, I can give a permission to Taisia if it needs. No, Violet can <laughs> this time. Okay. Can everyone see the presentation? Yes. Yes. So basically today we our team decided to focus of course on marketing strategy and first of all we would like to mention the mission of the company of the Dobroporadak and that is uh, 
so uh, to implement social practices, of course, to develop a community spirit and um, to establish faith in human capabilities. And so far, we divided our target audience into four main groups. The, these are corporations that might improve their social practices, social corporate responsibilities. Uh, then individual investors, governmental fundraising organizations, and educational organizations. And we will start from targeting big corporations. So for targeting big corporations, of course, uh, we decided to go with the ANSA matrix basis. And uh, as we had did actually in uh, our previous presentation. And first of all, we decided to focus on such activities that uh, deduct tax. So I believe that we all know that uh, for major big corporations, for example, tax deducting activities can be a major hit for them, like um, a, a big bonus actually to the extra social corporate responsibility that uh, they can contribute in. So uh, basically for the first thing we have is to offer the services for uh, interest correlating companies. So the companies that are already interested in uh, such services okay like we noticed that these companies have been contributing to similar activities we first of all will target those by offering them our services and then uh, we also have a loyalty program for which if a company joins and donates to several different projects uh, they might get extra uh, bonuses for and of course uh, being added to our hall of fame which uh, we have mentioned and uh, the last one is to develop projects for uh, csr oriented corporations so uh, for such major corporation, corporations that we always notice that they uh, target certain activities uh, for their uh, CSR, we will basically uh, try to develop such projects that are similar to those that they uh, have activities in, just uh, to get basically their attention and so to get their donations. <clears throat> And for strategies uh, to implement, we will actually use the following ones. Uh, we will keep the communication communication part, of course, and we will uh, arrange discussion boards between the interested parties. I mean, between our stakeholders, between uh, the Proparadic itself and uh, big corporations we are targeting. Then we will keep the mon uh, like we will keep monitoring. And uh, this means that we will offer a platform to track the investments and evaluate the deal. Uh, as we mentioned before about this loyalty program and uh, this system of donating, uh, of investing money in several projects in a row, for instance, in a month. And uh, then we will, keep, uh, we will keep transparency, of course, and um, this will be done by quarterly and annual reports, activity reports, then uh, we will encourage the awareness, the brand awareness and the company awareness in, in general by newsletters and promotion letters. And uh, we will personalize each offer and uh, offering um, like a suggestion an individual approach to each corporation. As we mentioned, we will either target the companies that are interested, that are interested in our current projects, or we will, um, so to speak, um, <clears throat> develop or suggest uh, the projects to the companies that are currently uh, don't know to which uh, to, to which exactly a social activity they should uh, uh, they should invest. So we will we will um, reschedule and uh, arrange our um, our offers according to the company's needs. Also, so we will keep this personalization. And next, we have individual investors to target. Yes, and basically we've decided to go through a three-step program. Firstly, we will target, uh, we will use targeting advertisement, and this is the most efficient resource management we've ever had because this way we will be able to attract the people who are more likely to join our organization and are more likely to contribute to it, to donate to it, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Then we would use a bring a friend program, we, which we have uh, discussed about in our previous presentations. And uh, the next step is logically networking because through this bring a friend uh, program and targeting uh, advertisement, we would be able to create the whole system, which would allow us to 
lead the Barbaric to prosperity and uh, by attracting the people who would be able who would gladly join us and who will be able to contribute a lot to our program and uh, this is how we're going to do it basically in this regard we would use rewards for people who are joining us we would uh, report on every our action in our program and the key parameter for our program is transparency so the everyone everyone would see what how much progress we've made and how we've made it all all our transactions all our deeds and everything will be transparent thus we would be able to earn trust of our consumers so the next is uh, yeah. governmental fundraising organizations uh, can you please go to the next slide yeah despite the independence from government uh, a number of NGOs uh, can rely on governmental funding to function so uh, many NGOs receive funding from local state or federal government entities through grants a grant is a financial award given to an organization with a specific purpose uh, grants can be essentially gifts that do not need to be repaid. So grant fundraising can be challenging and demands a great deal of investment to get right. And can you go to the next slide, please? Uh, the steps are following. So you need to get to know our funder. So one of the most important aspects of any funding application is to demonstrate how a project can help the funder to achieve their purpose. Uh, therefore, it is absolutely vital that we find a funder that shares our organization's aspirations. The second is introduce our organization before applying. So get in touch with our chosen funder before applying, ask questions uh, and make a positive impression. And so uh, the third is read the application direction carefully and follow them. This is obvious. Uh, the fourth is create urgency. It means uh, funders often receive similar applications and it is often the case that the proposal that appears to be more urgent will be selected. Um, maintain online presence. Uh, so a well-maintained website, for example, that will only encourage funders to support our organization. Whereas a poor website may put them off, even if we have written an excellent application. So in the last one is to be positive. Uh, so we need to convince our uh, funder that we are proud of our work and it will resonate positively with our chosen funder. Uh, so how do we appeal to, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Uh, how do we appeal to the government? Just three steps that I would like to mention. The first one is to consider our value to government agencies or to governmental fundraising organizations. So we should understand how our products and services that we provide, how do they meet the customer's needs? In this case, how do they meet the needs of uh, the government and governmental organizations? And uh, our company should be able to solve this problem and to support their mission. The second point is to improve our web presence and Mark talked about this enough. And the third one is to create a capability statement. So our company should have a government focused capability statement. And the statement is usually a one page document of our business competencies. So it provides specific information uh, that will convince our potential uh, customers, like fund raising organizations, that they should do business with our company. Well, uh, can you move to the next slide, please? Thank you. So uh, one of the goals actually presented on the website of the Braparadok, uh, or the main one of the go main goals of uh, this charity organization is to, as they say, make the world better. 
through education. And obviously, that's one of the most welcoming for, uh, for the Braporiadok uh, target audiences uh, are, is uh, educational organizations. Um, uh, from my personal experience, uh, I can say that uh, uh, di different educational organizations, such as schools, can you go to the next slide, please? Uh, such as schools, uh, uh, universities, museums are always very welcoming to, to for cooperation with uh, charity organizations because it's a choice it's a chance uh, to um, attract more people to go to museum schools uh, to learn something new uh, without uh, spending much money so uh, uh, it would be a really good cooperation so I actually there are in this case I think there are millions of options uh, uh, who can we cooperate with uh, I, I have just outlined we have just outlined four schools museums libraries and universities but there are much more it depends on the imagination of uh, the preparatic members actually uh, can you go to the next slide please and uh, what actions can be organized for in attracting um, people from different target audiences and i think that uh, the target audience of uh, the preparatic is huge there are no uh, age uh, boundaries or educational boundaries or career boundaries uh, so there are a huge space for <laughs> imagination or organizing something and i have just outlined four uh, it can be lectures and courses uh, of online offline uh, with different uh, museums or universities uh, about different subjects uh, for different ages and so on and so forth. Also events with specialists uh, with interesting people from educational area. Uh, volunteer work, we can uh, attract more ed um, educational organizations through helping them organizing their own events or courses or uh, different activities. Um, and also one of the things which can be used for promoting us and uh, um, educational organizations is uh, to ex uh, organize trips to different museums, exhibitions, art places, universities, also schools, uh, and uh, many other interesting uh, education places uh, where we can learn something new and interesting. So that's all I think what we wanted to say. Oh, thank you. Thank you. That was a very good and very business presentation. So, team, do you have any questions, suggestions, comments? Okay, I have. Uh, as usual. Uh, so, talking about uh, private investors, so we can use crowdsourcing platforms and crowdfunding platforms uh, because uh, this is uh, another place where we can find uh, some new volunteers, some new people, and also we can find some money there. Yes, we still need some projects to be done and some projects to be sell them for money rise. It's okay. So just keep in mind that uh, crowdfunding is a good tool even in commercial sectors for some projects. It's really work that you can uh, just uh, select um, some part of your project, even marketing project, and uh, rearrange it to crowdfunding like making some merchandise tools if they're really good and you cooperate with some artists or even with some charity organization you can use it as a tool for some crowdfunding rising programs uh, just keep in mind that uh, my the most uh, and the huge amount of money is in the hands of population, not uh, of corporation and government. Uh, and okay, uh, also you can use a gamification technology, not even uh, for volunteers, but also for corporation. It's really work when you use, uh, use some ratings, some scoreboards uh, between your corporate investors 
uh, okay, it's not a Forbes list, yes, yes, but it's your personal lists uh, for the for investors. They really like play games, even uh, on corporate sites and inside corporates. Mm, it's hard to explain, but um, uh, there are a lot of gamification and uh, situations with uh, games without any. Um, clear rules inside big corporation and it's really work that uh, corporate people love to game, have loved to game. Okay. Um, and about imagination and about this, your presentation. As already mentioned, you start to understand your target audience and you start to understand your projects. Okay, maybe it was intuitional, but you make your presentation in black and white colors. And it's okay and it's a very good tool because uh, some of your uh, blinded person or maybe partly blinded person sometimes prefer uh, to use some accessible options like uh, black and white pictures. You use it in your presentation and uh, in this way you show that you understand your audience and the problems of your audience okay maybe it was just um, some more from feelings but it's really work okay go you and we go to our study okay you have one two three four five six seconds to take a breeze and we go further. So today we'll talking about approaches to global competition. So every company, every organization and every person really want to rule the world, mm, even in our cases. So um, in my previous uh, work, I was a journalist. Uh, right now it's just uh, from time to time and sometimes I, <laughs> I work as a correspondent for some of our TV channels in uh, and uh, talk with uh, government person. Also, I have talked with Vera Vladimirovna several months ago. And um, what can I say? Everybody wants to rule the world. Everybody wants to have a better life, for more power and uh, wants uh, to approach the global competition. So. It works even in marketing and you as a marketer can make this global strategy and uh, move your company from domestic market to global marketing activity. So today we are talking about domestic and global marketing activity and right now um, I can say to you that uh, most of the basic principles uh, for effective marketing apply equivalent well for domestic and uh, the global marketing activity it's almost similar but they have very big differences so it's about some paradox however globalization introduced us uh, a number of cases a number of companies uh, and uh, bring us uh, a great amount of challenges um, to um, make uh, unique operation and unique uh, strategies uh, operating similarly in different countries and the global markets. Uh, the great example is Alibaba or Aliexpress. It's uh, the same company, but for different target audience. And they work uh, for different markets. So in Russia, there are no Alibaba uh only aliexpress and uh, it's a local uh market for china if i'm not mistaken so, but in china the alibaba market and uh, have a huge uh, market share they connected with uh, wechat so it's differences in countries that we must understand okay moving forward uh what is the best way to enter global market it's only one question you can Mm, and you need to answer uh, uh, using uh, some strategies for global market. So, first of all, you must uh, 
decide for you or when should you adjust the product's features to customize it to customer needs in a different global market, need or not. Uh, we will talk about globalization, we will talk about localization, so it will be further. Uh, next question, what you need to learn and to understand, how do you manage the cost and complexes of products promotion? when it takes place in different locations, in different countries, with different languages, uh, cultural sensitivities, and customers' expectations. So what will you do with the value of your customer in different countries? And um, that consideration uh, you should uh, include in the product pricing. And so you must understand when a good uh, is offered in different markets using different currencies and exchange rates also because your production can um, be located in another country or you can move some of your processes inside the country you want to move so talking about some words about magic so no risk no magic and uh, things typically approach international education they must analyze the market opportunities as well as their internal capabilities to determine which approach will be the best to fit. Uh, the best to fit the mission and the purpose of the company. You must remember that every uh, move must be connected with the global mission of your company. And often businesses start with a low risk strategy. Yes, because they did not understand the market and maybe sometimes they have a very short of budget. But uh, sometimes the situation can be different. And uh, as it was with Lenovo company in 1811, uh, they disconnected from IBM company. Mm -hmm. uh, not correct. They returned their products from IBM company uh yes uh, lenovo was uh, uh, producing uh, the laptops of ibm from 19th and uh, the laptops was the products of lenovo uh, and they just uh, returned their products to their brand and start to uh, promote their products very aggressively they spent uh, a huge amount of money, the budget was uh, like in billion dollars uh, in one year. It was one of the largest budgets for promotion in history. So just uh, search for some numbers in uh, global web and you will see that it's really impressive. And even in Moscow, you can see, uh, you can just find some pictures uh, in the web uh, where on every corner you can see a trucks with Lenovo uh, label and Lenovo brand uh, uh, painted uh, on the trucks and it was a really good promotion campaign. Uh, yes, it's a high risk to use such uh, promotion tools, but if you have a budget, okay, no problem. Uh, they have a success in it. And um, so, when we come to the global market and to another country, we start exporting. And exporting means sending goods produced in one country to sell them in another country. This is stage before localization. If you really use it in our strategy. So um, exporting is a low risk strategy um, that businesses find attractive for several reasons. Uh, first, major products in um, domestic markets uh, might find new grown opportunities overseas. Second, some firms find a less risky and more profitable to export existing products instead of developing new ones and it's really work and third uh, firms that face seasonal domestic demands might choose uh, some markets uh, for the offerings abroad to balance um, some gaps in their funding and their budgets during uh, seasonal demands um, okay and um, sometimes Mm, smaller firms often choose expertise over their strategies because uh, it offers a degree of control over risk, cost, and resource commitment. Mm, not every 
company can uh, just make a factory and uh, make a full production line coming into a new country. So you must understand this and uh, we will talk about this further. Some companies and some agencies offer a great distribution channel and better distribution channel than um, local market uh, builders and local market ourselves. So, one further. I already mentioned that one of the way, okay, we have 10 minutes, I think it will be not enough, but I will start uh, to make a presentation more quickly. So, uh, another way of and talking about strategies, uh, first strategies uh, for your products is licensing and franchising. So you can see uh, on some products uh, taped under the license. So it's when um, under a license agreement, a firm license provides a product to a foreign firm, a license, by granting that firm uh, the right to use a license in manufacturing process brand name patents or sell knowledge in return for payments uh it's okay in it because sometimes uh, patents was invented in one country but used all over the world it's all about globalization it's uh, the most fast and short way mm, talking about franchising yes you know about uh, some franchisee companies that come out of uh, Russia right now, it's McDonald's. Yes, they use franchise uh, systems. And also one of the two, and another two uh, biggest sphere with franchise, it's holiday, it's not only holiday inns, it's hotel businesses and medical insurance businesses like medical labs. Uh, so uh, it's really huge amount of sales from franchise in these uh, shares and uh, works. Um, and this method doesn't contain some risk. It's typically the least profitable method. Yes, when you give a franchise to another um, uh, to another shop, to another restaurant, or to another holiday, you just bring them a brand name, you bring brand book, you bring your marketing strategy to another person, but you don't own these uh, holidays or these uh, hotels or these restaurants even. And so we have a good situation with McDonald's when in Siberia, uh, the owners of uh, McDonald's restaurant declined to close the restaurants if you want a McDonald's in Russia, so you can visit ICI Bureau and eat McDonald's still there. Uh, because uh, they have uh, a license uh, franchise uh, documents with another firm and they can decide, okay, we use this franchise still or not. And it's more long-term and more effective way to communicate with your partners. Okay. Next way to go to the international market is a joint venture. A joint venture is a partnership between a domestic and a foreign firm. Mm, both partners invest money, share ownership, and share control over the venture. Uh, it comes from uh, some um, funds, some uh, markets, and typically the foreign partner provides expertise about new market. Uh, it's like with Razor and Razor Russia, because under the Razor Russia, we can see some company like uh, Asbis and uh, they renamed the company, um, the filial of their company for Razor Russia, but they still an Asbis company grow. Mm, and uh, uh, because it's very fast way uh, when they uh, just uh, divide some money and some risks between uh, two uh, companies. And it's uh, less risky and less flexible, but joint ventures may afford tax advantages in many countries. So, and uh, particularly there, uh, foreign-owned businesses are taxed at higher rates than locally owned business. It's really work. It's really work in China, uh, in Singapore, even in many other countries all over the world. And some countries require all business ventures to be at last partially owned by domestic business partners 
and yes we're still talking about china because it's not only by domestic business but, but also by government uh, joint ventures may also span multiple countries and this is the most common when a business partners team to conduct businesses in a world region uh, direct investments uh, it's uh, like multinational organization may choose to engage a full-scale production and marketing abroad by direct investing in a whole owner substars it was with uh, our manufacturer out of us uh, and uh, this still main part of it uh, is in a government sector but so uh, they have a direct investment from Renault Group and from um, <laughs> right now I will not um, they produce your no machine out of us and so on. Uh, so I don't know who is the owner of Renault Group right now, but and just remember that direct um, investment is still working and uh, as a opposite of the previous mentioned method of entry this type of entry results in a company direct owning manufacturing or enables people to complete more aggressive abroad because they are literally in the market however because the subsidiary is responsible for all the market activities in a foreign country and this method requires a much larger investment it's also a risky strategy because it requires a complete understanding of business condition and customs in a foreign country next one uh trade intermediaries uh, i see that some companies from greece from china from slovenia and so on so on use this way if a company lacks of resources or expertise to enter a foreign market, it can hire trade intermediaries who poses it's like um, some sorts of ambassadors who poses the necessary the contracts and relationships in those markets. These entrepreneurs, middlemen, typically purchase some products from local domestic markets, goods at the rate below a manufacturer's best discounts and then resell them in overseas markets uh, like using Alibaba market and so on so on next in US they have um, commercial centers to help some businesses going overseas these centers provide resources to promote the export of used goods and several abroad and this is a full uh, term services centers that uh, will bring some lawyers some uh, legal information assistance with contracts uh, with export import uh, logistics uh, agreement arrangement and so on so um, they also facilitate some contracts between buyers sellers bankers distributors government uh, officials and uh, this center represent a low risk way uh, in gain um, in, in going into international markets uh, to gain some information and familiarity about an overseas markets because they have uh, the relationship with these markets for several years next um, okay I have some examples about Toyota progressions into global business uh, um, and they began exporting some cars in a few regional markets, then going to uh, multinational markets. And today it is a global market center all over the world. They use some strategy about their products, about um, how to say, it's not about the price, but it's about the value. If you want to have a products for edges, you choose a Toyota. Okay, it's not the most comfortable car in the world, but it's one of the uh, don't using car in the world. It's one of the famous car in the world, and they use their reputation for global expansion. Uh, Coca Cola use in other ways. They use really regional languages, uh, some brandings, and so on, so on. Uh, like many product company, Coca Cola uh, used a mix of standardization and localized market. Uh, 
uh, the classic red and white colors remain the same globality, while the flavor profile is adjusted slightly based on region and distributions. And we'll talk about globalization and localization, standardization. Yes. Okay, we have less than a minute. Finally, we go on to global marketing strategies. So we talk about choosing a market, choosing a way to go to that market. Okay, we come to the marketing strategies. So firm choose to engage in international markets for many reasons and um, for track uh, for to gain some more money, some more uh, market expansion, new profit opportunities, and so on. So so. Okay, I think that we have a little quorum and the other will, person will come to us during the process. So, um, about globalization and global marketing strategy. So, um, when a firm choose uh, to market internationally, it must decide whether to adjust a domestic marketing program. Depending on uh, how much centralized control a firm itself wish to maintain over its marketing. So, and we have two ways here right now. So we have a way uh, uh, when an organization want to maintain a strong control and uh, centralized control, um, it's using a strategy called standardization. And if an organization want to adjust products, messaging, um, local cultural marketing activities to fit the needs and preferences of local markets mm, around the world it's using a localization strategy uh, so global standardization uh, adds uh, one of the most favorite uh, <laughs> argument for nowadays and um, this is you can find out some products from and we have a good example of standardization okay the standardization of jeans so you produce some cotton in india uh, or in china then you move it uh, to india if it was produced in china paint your jeans and uh, make your jeans there then move for back to china then move uh, these products to america and so uh place some labels like um, some brand names and so on so on and so it's uh, a short example of uh, global standardization and uh, globalization itself and using this approach a product and uh, largely in or uniform across the world with little variation uh, in the marketing mix from country to country so it's uh, very cozy it's uh, very familiar but sometimes it doesn't work well for some products so if you talk about dress if you talk about uh, not cultural dress like using myself uh, i'm right now in and uh, some domestic variants uh, of uh, short uh of end of dress um, so we have um, an identical design of some brand names all over the world and it's a standardization so standardization can translate uh, into lower operating costs because uh, it's similar it's like making a clone and um, there is no extra costs and so as already mentioned, it's like cloning some products uh, all over the world without any differences or without little differences between the markets. And marketers can use the same approach for development, promoting and delivering products and sales worldwide. Uh, like uh, with mobile phones, uh, also it works very good. So you have uh, a one phone with differences of firmware. So it's uh, with global standard firmware or with local standard firmware. So it depends and you can all change it uh, all over the time. But the, the products is still the same. So it's only a smartphone that's standard for every worldwide corner all over the world and um, 
Standardization brings the ability to develop and invest in a unified brand and uh, company identity through the world. It's uh, really cause it's really good work. Next, okay. Because you need to have only one product line that consists of a small number of global brands rather than um, of big amounts of localized product brands and uh, extensions along with costs and improved efficiency associated with the management, a smaller total number of brands. So one brand to bring to everybody. And uh, companies that push this approach assume that consumers' needs are relatively homogeneous around the world and the same basic marketing mix will work across global markets. Sometimes it really works in that way. And this organization typically has a centralized approach to the marketing function and try to minimize the needs for developing localized marketing strategy. Next strategy, localization. And uh, this is argument for localized marketing, for sure. Okay, talking about localization, uh, we are talking about uh, another end of the spectrum in localization strategy in which firm adjust their products and marketing mix for each target market. So advocates of localization argue that in reality, global standardization doesn't work. And in fact, nearly all exported products require one or more adaptation to be successful. It, and when we talk about these things, uh, you as linguistics also must understand uh, that about localization talk um, our scientist Lomonosov. So, and so uh, the talk was about language and uh, some uh, scientific terms that every terms coming from foreign languages must translate it for Russian language. So localization in activity. But uh, in work by Kotler, um, one study person, uh, one study was founded that about 80% of US exports require one or more small adaptation for and the average products requires at least four or five adaptation for the local markets. Uh, like labeling, packaging, materials, color, name, um, some products, uh, features, advertising themes, media, price, and sales promotion. Um, good example, talking about alcohol and some labels in local languages on the bottles just for your target audience to understand what they're drinking right now or with tobacco products the same. Uh, because sometimes uh, the scary movies on tobacco packs uh, working in one country doesn't work in another country and even not necessary for local government and for local maybe some acts. Uh, so um, talking about localization, we must understand that may involve in two ways, in two separate ways uh, and two factors uh, that can be used. Uh, so we can alter existing products to fit the needs of the local market, or we can create a completely new product mm -hmm. to fit the needs of the local target market. So it's the way to use this strategy and uh, the firm can choose one, two or blend it. So they can use also existing products and localize some features of it and make any new products that exist only in this local market. Mm, they think work with canoe manufacturing in Japan was working. Oh, it still works. So some models of uh, Japan car uh, still you can buy only in Japan. Uh, they have no export of these models, but you can buy it on Exxon and uh, bring to another country. Uh, because in another country they have another localized products, like we talking about uh, Suzuki Grand Vitara or Suzuki Tracker, mm, it's the same car. So in America it's Suzuki Tracker or um, even Chevrolet Tracker. And in another world it's Suzuki Grand Vitara. 
So it's the same car with the same tools, with the same name, with the same manufacturer. Yes, Victoria, you can say some words. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Is it like uh, the same example as uh, with uh, the uh, like the car in Infinity or how to how to pronounce it? It's actually the same uh, as, but it's in Europe. It is called in this way just in order to like uh, to a different type of people or something. But it's actually the same brand, right? Yes. Uh, talking about Infinity, we're talking also about. Um, <laughs> I don't remember the name. Okay, the trademark, but yes, you're right. Uh, even uh, the model names, uh, so RS300 uh, and so on, so on, the same. But uh, the first uh, uh, type of model, the name of model, really differs from country to country. Yes, you're right. Yeah, it's Nissan. Nissan, yeah, I remembered. Yeah, you're right. Uh, so, and we must understand that some local, if you talk about car manufacturers, about Toyota, about Infiniti, and about uh, some Lexus and uh, Toyota and Lexus, uh, Nissan and Infiniti. So, we must understand that it's a localization in another way. So, uh, in one of the legend, uh, the existence of uh, Lexus brands uh, was predicted by um, coming by uh, visiting Toyota to uh, Dubai market because they need more uh, luxury brand and Toyota doesn't have it uh, in that time. So they produce another brand with more luxury car just for local market of OIA. It's just a legend. It doesn't historic. It's not a historical fact, but it's uh, really creative uh, marketing. Okay. Because you can use also a legend of local legend in your marketing strategy, and it really works. Uh, like some stars on Subaru car, and so on. Mm. Okay, next. Uh, and the next strategy, when we blend some standardization and localization. Mm, really, it works with McDonald's. So they have uh, blend standardization of their main menu, and they have localization, they have localized menu, like uh, uh, Green Spring Roll, I don't remember, ah, with Wasabi. Yeah, uh, with Wasabi in China uh, and in Japan. So they really have it in regular menu. Mm, and you will not find this uh, product in another part of the world. But you can find Big Tasty, Big Mac, and Coca-Cola all over the world. Uh, just the language will be different, but the products will be the same. And um, uh, most organizations really decide to use this strategy because it's more flexible. And um, a lot of organizations to capitalize global opportunities available to them. So, all the strategy depends on organization structure, leaderships, and operations, the product categories, the markets in question, and the other factors. Uh, so both strategies and blended strategies offer attractive benefits. Uh, Victoria, do you have still the question or the right hand just? <laughs> Sorry, my bad. I, I, I'll, I'll put it down. Oh, okay. Thank you, because I see it and um, thinking about, okay, maybe another example. Okay, uh, go next. About segmentation strategy. Yes, you still need a segmentation strategy. You still need to segment your target audience because you need to, to um, not only, when you're thinking about localization or standardization, you must answer the question how you will segment the market of consumers in global markets and um, global marketers uh, use the same principles and process outlined in the segmentation and targets. Uh, so the question is still the same. To whom should I be marketing? Why them and how I can reach them most effectively? So the question is the same for the local markets, for the domestic markets, and for global markets. And global marketers use the same principles and process. Uh, 
So, okay. To develop a segmentation and targeting strategy, global marketers may use the common segmentation approaches employed in domestic markets like demographics, geography, psychographics, behavioral decision makers. So why they are decision makers? And understanding these things, they can go further and bring some new questions about culture, economic status and social environments that can be different from country to country from uh, domestic markets uh, and to international markets also you must understand that in fact just as in the usa and in all countries all over the world not all consumers within a country origin are the same yes globalization and mix of national racial uh, and religion really exist and um, even in domestic markets you can use different strategies and understand different uh, characteristics needs values and preferences uh, of your customers uh, and so uh, when you consider a global market opportunities uh, it's also important for marketers to look for characteristic interests needs and buying behaviors they can use to define segments uh, that transcend to national boundaries so uh, to answer this question to make a decision you must understand market size and grown potential uh, you must understand the competition and compatibility of market so yes it's dogs and cows matrix it's um, nothing new for you right now so you can use this thing to go into international market it was just some preparation work okay the marketing mix uh, for the global market is still the same so uh, but um, the principle the same but you must do some um, work during um, maybe some parts of it and uh, really choose new strategy or upgrade uh, and develop the domestic strategy depending on your products price placement and so on so on. Uh, one of the way for using global marketing mix is a product strategy plus promotion uh, for multinational corporation like um, okay sub um, ibm um, it's a very big companies even apple samsung and um, right now okay the samsung is a good example because they produce everything for everyone all over the world uh so you um, must understand that products and promotion is important because it can enable a company to make a minor adjustment uh, to a single products and its promotion strategy uh, then totally uh, revamping the products and promotion for different markets like not using some sexual harassment or um, sexual diversity in your advertising will make your advertising more uh, profitable and uh, more generalized all over the world and so um, this beverage brand used to form us um, you can use this formula for all markets all over the world if you don't use religious political sexual things in your advertising and in your strategy you can say that your strategy is almost universal and uh, you can just share your promotion translate it or use the same uh, theme for your promotion uh, in every country you can but you must understand some cultural behavior and uh, to understand this uh, cultural behavior and so uh, not to make a big amount of mistakes so before launching promotion programs uh, global companies must define their target markets because when mm, you came to another country even share of market even uh, some tra uh, traditions of the markets and um, choosing localization or standardization strategy really care now 
So you must understand also how you will customize your products. For doing this, you must do some marketing research. And after decided some strategy after product research, development, and creation, um, the next item for the global marketing uh, is to decide a budget. Because if you do not uh, maintain your budget during localization or during standardization, uh, your promotion will cost a huge amount of money and your strategy will fall down even not uh, your own start of it. And using integrated marketing communication, um, you can significantly increase efficiency and reduce promotional costs, like automatization of your analysis uh, and marketing automatization platform, uh, using some statistics and um, uh, even when you do a marketing research of new markets, you can use some local uh, influencer and the auditory to understand uh, your markets uh, more closely. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, and going further to promotion. Uh, when a company decides to become global, it must consider also, as already mentioned, social, cultural, economic, political, competitive, and other factors uh, related to the global expansion and it is considering. Creating a worldwide marketing plan is not a simple task, but it really exists and you can do it by yourself. It's uh, Sometimes it's virtually impossible to, to company mm, to communicate uh, one identical message all over the world, all over global markets. Uh, I will show you the good example on the next slides. Okay, so da, da, da. using a language. So different languages uh, have some different rules, like uh, we write and read from left to right, some languages from right to left, even some Japanese languages can be written and East languages can be write from up to down and so on, so on. So you must understand that uh, it's only one way. Mm, but global marketers must balance four potentially completed business objectives uh, when developing worldwide advertising. So building a bread while speaking with one voice. So you can see here lace, you understand that it's lace, you understand the products, uh, no matter in what corner of the earth uh, you will find out this product. Okay. Uh, developing economies of scale of creative process. So you can see uh, almost the same advertising all over the world and uh, almost the same discounted and actions all over the world but you will see that some um, promotion differs for maximizing local effectiveness of advertisement and increasing the company's speeds of implementation uh, how uh, and uh, this works using these points. So when you do this, you can use language, colors, values, business norms, religious, and holidays in local markets. So to successfully implement these approaches, and um, this will help you to. Um, to understand your customer behavior and uh, um, use some external influences uh, for reduce your marketing budgets. And uh, when you understand many other factor, factors, including political, legal environment, economic status, and technological environment, you can impact a brand promotional mix um, from one market to another with little differences. And uh, the adaptation of your market strategy must be very high. Uh, one example from myself, oh, you have used it. I didn't mention that. Uh, I really love when you use uh, some examples from your private life. Uh, so one example from my private life, my brother uh, have returned from 
um, Sri Lanka several days ago. Uh, he left the, in January and uh, decided to change country, change some things of his life. But when he came to Sri Lanka, he understands that they have also some problems with government, uh, with fuel, uh, even with electricity and so on. So, so the problems have a global impact and you must understand some local problems uh, to have a good market share. So, uh, and after the electricity has down, they use on local products because uh, no fridges worth working and uh, all not localized products just became um, uneatable and um, hardly to consume. And Okay, as already mentioned, marketing research is essential for marketers. Use it every time and every day. So it's about marketing mix, how you can use it in your for everyday life, in your future markets, in your domestic and in global markets. Uh, and talking about price on global marketing mix. So the price will change from domestic markets because of logistic, because of some local engagement of some local X. And um, the cost uh, must be not very high. You must understand your competitors in your, well, okay. Um, your competitor's price in your new international market to be good. And even placement, product, and promotion work in concepts uh, with pricing is a global marketing mix. So I'm talking about pricing. Uh, we're talking about process of uh, determining what a company will receive in exchange for its products. It's not about uh, selling the products. It's about receiving some uh, investment and uh, returning your investment in products. And um, Many pricing consideration in uh, global marketing are similar to domestic, um, domestic marketing. As marketers develop pricing strategy, so in domestic market, they will do the same in global markets. So they still have uh, to achieve some financial goals uh, of the company and generating profits, nothing new. Uh, they must match the reality of the marketplace and consumer buying trends. Yes, nothing new. And um, they also must support the uh, designated position for products, making its consistency with the other elements of the marketing mix, promotion, products, and placement. So everything the same as in domestic or local markets and in international markets. With price, okay, you must understand that promotional campaigns in different countries will cost uh, sometimes higher, sometimes lower, and uh, high prices are required to cover high cost of manufacturing, shipping, uh, more advertising and promotional campaigns. Uh, but sometimes you can choose low risk strategy uh, with lower budget of marketing, but with long-term uh, communication with your editor. It depends on your company. Uh, and you must understand that your budget is not an eternal. Okay. Place and distribution that really cares. Place determines the channels used to distribute the products across different countries. It's a way how the products communicate with your editor. Now, like um, you must understand uh, where to place your products, depending um, on their position on the marketplace. What does it mean? Uh, you can't place uh, luxury products, luxury products in a chain chips market, and also it's um, a bit. It's a bad idea to place uh, regular products uh, like uh, maybe some clone products, cheap products to some boutique stores. Okay. So place the product to its level and uh, 
depending on the position in the marketplace. So home task, ah, I have to the market. So I try to do my best, but it's really not all the information I want to share with you. But uh, for today, you can find this uh, that information uh, in Canvas and uh, your next task will be uh, to find out or to choose some strategies. So standardization, localization, and so on, so on, so on, so on uh, for the global market. Just imagine that you go to the global market, even with your government servant. So like a president of the whole universe or of the whole world. Uh, or, you want just to change the country with your candidates, uh, with charity organization, okay, it will be maybe more easily, but you must choose your strategy and describe your opportunities going to global market. And this is all for today. If you have two. Oh, sorry. Do you have any questions before the end of our session? Uh, yeah, I have a question. Uh, should we choose like a specific country or just in general a uh, global market? It depends on you. You can choose, um, so with this, with this standardization strategy, it means mm -hmm. that you will choose all over the world. Or you can choose uh, one country and use a localization strategy. It depends only on your team and on your selection. Or you can blend in this two case. We okay, have good imagination, it. so we'll imagine the, the situation. Don't worry. Yes, we are. <laughs> Indeed. Okay, hope so. If I may, I have a question actually concerning, uh, for example, companies. Uh, let's take Ashendam, for example. Uh, yes. Uh, you were talking about the price of the product because uh, uh, what I said is that in several countries uh, the the production the the items differ, mm -hmm. uh, but still the price uh, is almost the same uh, per, for example, I don't know for for t-shirt or for shorts. I don't know. Uh, I mean for the type of product but not for the quality nor for the design and so on and so forth and still when we have today for example in moscow we, let's imagine we still open we have uh, open shops uh, mm -hmm. we have um, a label where different prices are written so uh, do they reflect uh, a kind of um, universal approach uh, to their items, to their products, that uh, they present us uh, the idea that you can find the same product everywhere for this very price. Because actually when we, for example, visit the same Ash and Dam in different European countries, even inside Europe, they differ. Mm -hmm. As yes, well as, for example, yeah, sorry, just one more uh, mm -hmm. addition for uh, personal understanding, because uh, several times I mentioned, uh, for example, European uh, product, but uh, it is written uh, um, on the label not for sale inside the EU. So mm -hmm. what's, what's the idea inside this um, approach? Uh, the idea is simple. So they have a standardization lines of uh, products. They produce, uh, as already mentioned, if you talk about jeans, we can talk about every clothes in the world. So they produce some cotton in US, uh, then bring it to India for coloring and so on and so on. Then they move some products to Italy, labeled it with Italy brands and uh, bring it to several warehouses all over the world. So uh, you will have a uh, several warehouse, to, uh, one in Finland, one near China, or even in India, one in Pacific and so on and so on. Uh, it's one of the way how you can distribute your goods and lower the cost. So uh, the local resellers from different countries will buy these products from this local warehouse and lower uh, the logistic cost. So the price will be, Mm, really similar 
or you can use your own logistic to uh, trip your where your worries uh, all over the world from this warehouse because when you have a big uh, part of your goods and you move it to big warehouse uh, the price uh, didn't rise uh, accordingly it rise a very low and uh, after delivering to local stores uh, you can give some discounts and some politics even it's a part of marketing uh, to fix some price for some products and from marketing budget you will compensate some gaps in uh, revenue in income for your company partners but it works only for company partners and uh, sometimes in license agreement or in franchise agreement you'll find some um, points about cost and uh, of your products that it can uh, it can't be higher than this level if you need to bring the cost uh, the price for and uh, consumer higher you must connect to the company and uh, take an agreement for making this price high it's one of the way to use this uh why not for selling in uk mm, it's about uh, some local taxes and local acts sometimes in some clothes in some products you use some technologies um, uh, that um, use uh, that it knows not very cost effective like uh, ecological laws so with car manufacturers or uh, some local acts like uh, not using cotton in or chemical fabrics uh, from some source of clothes in some countries it's forbidden or it costs a very high amount of money for licenses it inside the country mm. i don't know about h&m so it's um, just about global strategy how it works uh, but sometimes oh, you can see even in Alibaba market or in AliExpress market some products that are not uh, shipped to another country from one country to another because of the warehouse so you can transport uh, from uh, UK or EU uh, to China or even to Africa without additional taxes and without additional permissions uh and some products can um how let's say can be sent outside of the country it's a good example with china when you can't um, when you can buy some products inside japan use it inside japan uh, but you can't move it outside of the japan so you can use it only locally mm, maybe it's sometimes of this products sometimes it's a good marketing products because when we talk about sony corporation uh, as an example i don't know as, as about h&m but i can talk about sony corporation so they have um, some international products and they start to test um, uh, their products in china so they produce some um, tools some goods bring it to china market start promotion analyze um, the information from consumers and then produce another product with high quality for the local market the whole world doesn't know what what this product that uh, is exist with better quality and so on and so on and you can buy it on the on local market so it's a marketing and it's really work it's a local market with international market and uh, Mm, as already say sometimes it's uh, usual i'm firing too too many questions no problem late at night, late at night. Uh -huh. okay so sometimes it's local policies uh like right now we have some restrictions from um, political behavior of uh, some countries uh that they can't um, use products uh, that was produced in 
use uh, United States or in Australia or even in Japan, in Russia. So we can't uh, move this uh, products uh, direct from this country to our country. Yes, we can receive it from another boundaries. And when we, with this restriction, receive these products in our country, we can't move these products because of our law agreement to another country. So if you buy, um, I don't know, uh, some luxury products from United States um, right now, right here in Russian Federation, and try to sell it in um, in other countries. You have a big uh, amount of questions. Where did you get it? How did you get it? And it will talk about great channels of logistics and so on, so on. So too many questions, too many fees, uh, and uh, uh, lowest restrictment is very um, unprofitable way to make a business mm, because some fees is very high and uh, many companies uh, decide not to, to share their reputation or not to give a bad luck of the for their reputation of the company uh, using this way to, for distributing and for attending uh, more local markets, more international markets. So maybe this is one of the way why they use only local products and only local brands, um, not sharing with uh, another regions. And sometimes if you talk about clothes, it can be um, ecological restriction about using some animals in producing some clothes. And uh, um, I think that it's about, uh, sometimes it's about animal skins or maybe some animals from the Red Book Mm. The, uh, can it be the aspect of so-called tax-free uh, policy? Just having in mind that, for example, uh, citizens outside European Union has the right to get tax-free when they buy something inside Europe and leave it with these goods. So, uh, for example, if we have this good uh, just shipped to our country, probably the price of um, this good is a bit different from the one um, that is sold just inside Europe. That means that uh, the shipping price uh, was lower for taxes. Yes, just uh, having in mind that, for example, these goods are uh, produced and uh, being shipped for them not to be brought back to Europe for lower price and uh, sold in uh, the European ter territory, just in European countries. Yes, it's one of the possible scenarios of this work. So sometimes it's working that way. Okay, thank you. No problem. Paulina, if uh, you want to ask question right now, you can. I see your question in the chat or next yeah. session. Yeah, I think that it's the time to ask my question. Uh, yeah, it's uh, like it doesn't um, concern our today's topic. It's um, a question about whether you know any kinds of students conferences where we could like theoretically participate in. Because uh, like me, Thais and two other girls are preparing um, a topic. So it is uh, entitled social media as a means of influencing behavioral consumers patterns. So we are already conducting research. Uh, we have some data to be analyzed. So just if you know any of these conferences, because now we struggle to find the one that uh, does not require any payment. So and some of them are not for students. So I would just kindly ask you to maybe send me the list of them or just uh, one <laughs> that you know. I know one. You can check Saint Petersburg. Так я на русском скажу. Попробуйте Санкт-Петербургский институт Петра Великого. 25-26 у них выходит студенческий сборник. Возможно, они успеют принять ваше исследование. 
я не назову точное название конференции сейчас, помню, что информация проскакивала. Потом СПБ Лети, у них есть целая ассоциация по Public Relations, которая, which one is, так, которая взаимодействует с международной ассоциацией Electrical Engineering. Но у них уже конференция прошла. Да, то есть поздно продаваться. Да, и... Что еще из ближайшего? Из ближайшего, как ни странно, посмотрите по 1С, один из компаний. У них есть конференции, которые связаны непосредственно с автоматизацией не только обучения, но и как раз маркетинга. И они проводятся зачастую в сотрудничестве с вузами. Из таких из хороших вузов это ЕЛЕЦ. В принципе, у них вопросы лингвистики есть, где можете, кстати, опубликоваться, не соврать бы, по-моему, даже бесплатно для студентов. Было, во всяком случае. Саранск, посмотрите, и Челябинск. Челябинский mm -hmm. институт культуры. Но мы в данном случае не привязываемся к конкретно этому учебному году, то есть нам самое главное податься вот в этом году, а, допустим, выступать, если, то мы можем и в следующем. Тут как раз таки угу. у нас нет такого четкого а, задания, чтобы именно в этом году. Можно тогда, я извиняюсь, правда, что вас так отвлекаю, а, попросить просто прислать, если вам будет удобно, на почту, я сейчас ее... Отправлю в чат, потому что сейчас, к сожалению, нет возможности сразу зафиксировать то, что вы сказали. Вот. И, соответственно, если вдруг вы знаете еще какие-то конференции, которые будут в следующем году, но податься можно сейчас, то я бы вас тоже попросила тогда uh -huh. скинуть. Вот. Спасибо вам большое, правда, за помощь. Спасибо. No problem. Хорошо, подумаю. Да. Так. Спасибо. До свидания. До свидания. До свидания. So, this is all for today. If you don't have any question, Adepa, Christian, maybe you have some questions. Sorry for Russian talk. It's just about shortening our conversation. Uh, yeah, I was actually going to ask maybe the same question about the conference, but since like the conversation was in Russian and uh, I didn't really understand that much. Uh, yeah, if it's possible, also send us by mail. Okay. Um, So uh, you can, uh, I will share information with Paulina or you can use a Canvas discussion course with teacher. Uh, I will try to maybe make an appointment for everybody um, with the list of conferences. I know that will um, can take place because of the situation, everything is changeable during the time and some of sort of uh, conferences was um, just stopped for um, even for students but um, the rejection right now sometimes just a point of one of colleagues okay so uh, yes i hear your question i will find out some information and send it maybe really in list in appointment of canvas it will be the better okay. way for mm -hmm. everybody thank, I think. You. Mm -hmm. thank you so much i have another question about the control test i just saw it on canvas so um Mm, what references can we use like to just prepare for it and when exactly is it going to be i think may 9th if i'm not mistaken okay. yes so uh the test will take place uh, at the beginning of may mm, so next month <coughs> the question is very simple mm, it's just a test of uh, terms uh we have already uh learned so mm, the last topic Not the, not the next one, but the last last uh, will be like a bonus uh, and um, so it's it's only about terms. Uh, you can you will have three three, three attempts. Uh, it's really simple. So uh, it's more for working with your comments with your teammates, because I know that you can share uh, right questions to your teammates. I was a mm -hmm. student three times, so I know how it works. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I think that it's just a small preparation for better understanding how um, it's not a standard situation, but uh, It's very simple. 
Uh, it's about ten question. Mm -hmm. mm, so it's fast, heavy. Yes, you have three attempts. The highest mark is uh, or will be collected. So just share an attempt between your teammates, and you will. Uh, the terms will be like um, tar about targeting, segmentation, so advertising. Nothing mm -hmm. about some. Mm -hmm. I need a good example. Oh, there will be no questions about nuclear physics. So, <laughs> yeah, <Don't>... for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for noting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And so maybe some string theory, not, not mm -hmm. uh, right now. It's uh, you can. I already have such question in a big course, but we have only one semester, so it's a really short version of these questions. And um, I think right now you will understand uh, every point, and um, I hope I was a good teacher and <laughs> uh, submit with you with needed information and every information you will find you uh, you have no time limits i'll have one i will check it right now do you have a time limit for one attempt no you don't have a time limit and you have 10 days for this test 10 from 9th of May to 19th of May. So I think you will find out the right questions and the right answers. Uh, just even you start this test on the 9th of May and end on the 19th of May. No problem. Mm -hmm. If you want to, it's, okay, it's very, I would say, <laughs> it's very user friendly. <laughs> yeah, I understand. Okay. Thank you so much for the information. Thank you no for your help. Okay. Have a good night. Goodbye. Bye bye. So, okay. So, Dapa, do you have any questions or not? Okay, I think not. Okay, thank you for coming and see you next session.